How y'all doing? Good. Good. Doing well. Uh, listen, I, I am uh, proud to be joined today uh, by Dr. Hellerstedt, uh, the Commissioner of DSHS, uh, as well as uh, Chief Nim Kidd of the Texas Division of Emergency Management, uh, as well as this incredible team behind me, uh, all of whom have been actively in, involved in uh, the Texas response to COVID-19, uh, dating back at least to January, some even before that. From the very start, the state of Texas anticipated the possibility of community spread of COVID-19. Under the leadership of Commissioner Hellerstedt and Chief Kidd, working with other state and local leaders, the state has proactively prepared strategies to respond to the various scenarios that we face. In doing so, we are building on the state's pre-existing infectious disease capabilities that enhance our response. DSHS is the lead agency in the state's response. They work closely with the Texas Division of Emergency Management to coordinate the state response to COVID-19. DSHS and TDEM also work with other state agencies, local health departments, as well as healthcare providers across the state. On January the 24th, DSHS began leading daily calls with public health authorities, healthcare providers, city and county officials, as well as school districts. On January the 31st, DSHS activated the State Medical Operations Center. Last week, DSHS announced that 10 public health labs in Texas are now equipped to perform COVID-19 testing throughout the state. DSHS has established a website for COVID-19 to share up-to-date information It'd be helpful if you get that out. It is dshs.texas.gov backslash coronavirus backslash. Again, it is dshs.texas.gov backslash coronavirus backslash. Now, the state has also asked health insurers and HMOs operating in Texas to waive costs associated with the testing and telemedicine visits concerning coronavirus. We have a long list of health insurers that have agreed to comply with that request. Very importantly, for the uninsured, if an uninsured person needs testing for coronavirus, there are two options. One is a public, health, public health testing or private laboratory testing. For public health testing, it requires consultation with local health departments. If the person meets public health criteria, then the person is eligible for testing through public health testing with no cost to the person. Private testing can also occur but there could be a cost to the individual. If people need to find a local provider, they can call 211, which can direct them to low or no cost providers in their area. As far as Texas schools are concerned, the TEA and uh, Commissioner Mike Morath, they, they work daily with school districts to prepare the appropriate response for any particular school district. Commissioner Morath has begun leading daily calls with superintendents. Very important to note, Texas is seeking waivers for federal regulations for the school lunch program to give districts flexibility to provide students food should the district need to shut down for a temporary period to respond to the coronavirus. Now, some information about numbers where we are today and understand they constantly change. But at this time, not counting the people who have been repatriated uh, into Lackland Air Force Base, Texas has 39 confirmed cases in Collin, Dallas, Tarrant, Fort Bend, Gregg, Harris, Montgomery, Smith, Bell, and Travis counties. 220 Texans have been tested in either Texas public health labs 
or by the CDC. And we currently have approximately 75 Texans who are being tested as we speak. Texas, some, some important facts I want you to make sure you get. Texas Public Health Labs have the capacity to test 273 people per day currently with that ability to increase also with private labs coming online. Importantly, next week, CPL will be able to test several thousand per week. In addition, there is LabCorp and Quest Diagnostics that provide testing. I'm also pleased to announce something uh, that's happening as we speak right now. It's the first drive-through testing facility. I'm pleased to announce that Mayor uh, Nirenberg in the city of San Antonio and his team are opening the first drive-through testing facility in Texas. This has been a, a, a swift uh, advancement with the combined effort of the city of San Antonio city manager Eric Walsh, Metropolitan Health District Director Dr. Don Emmerich, Fire Department Chief Charles Hood, Southwest Texas Regional Advisory Council Executive Director Eric Epley, UT Health San Antonio President Bill Heinrich, and University Hospital CEO George Hernandez. This facility is opening at this moment. It will initially be for first responders, healthcare workers, operators of critical infrastructure and key resources, and certain high-risk patients. Since they've only been open quite literally a few minutes, it's too soon to tell how many people they will be able to test each day. My team is also working with the cities of San Antonio and Dallas and is in conversation with the city of Austin to also implement drive-through testing sites that will also be run and managed at the local level. I expect and anticipate that at least two, if not all three of those cities, uh, will be up and running next week or the week after that. Our local leaders and partners know their communities best, and I appreciate their swift action in providing these facilities. Well, as the situation continues to unfold, Texas is taking additional action to mitigate the spread of the virus and to protect the public's health and safety. To ensure that the state of Texas and our cities and counties are fully capable to prepare and respond to COVID-19, I am at this moment declaring a state disaster for all counties in the state of Texas. Now, pursuant to this state disaster declaration, there will be many directives issued by this office over the coming days. Here are a few. This will authorize the use of all available and necessary state government resources to help prepare and respond to COVID-19. This will give the Texas Division of Emergency Management the ability to reassign and fully utilize personnel where they are needed the most. This will provide the immediate ability to move resources around the state, including resources obtained through the strategic national stockpile. This will empower the Texas Attorney General to pursue cases of price gouging and ensure that offenders are prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. And my office can approve the waiving of state laws that hinder state agencies' ability to respond to COVID-19. A few more things. A key focus in our response is to prioritize protecting of the most vulnerable populations who would be most likely to contract COVID-19. As a result, I am directing state agencies to restrict visitation at nursing homes, state-sponsored living centers, hospitals, and daycares. This directive allows limited exceptions for things like end-of-life visitation and requires all individuals to go through the proper screening. We want to make sure that we do all we can to prevent this vulnerable senior population or others uh, in hospitals from being contracted with COVID-19. I'm also directing state agencies to, res to restrict visitation at prisons, jails, and juvenile justice facilities. My staff remains in constant contact 
uh, with all of those facilities is uh, they work on establishing best practices protocols. I'm also directing state agencies to take any action necessary to facilitate telemedicine. In addition, I'm directing state agencies to provide flexible work and telework policies to employees to give them the ability to care for their families while ensuring the state government continues to function at full capacity and provide all necessary services. This means, in addition, that anybody who uh, thinks or feels or believes that they are ill in any way, they need to stay home and work from home. You may have the flu, you may have some other uh, uh, infectious disease, or, or you may have COVID-19. We don't need people who are sick coming into work. Now, one byproduct of having more people work from home, uh, whether it be uh, people who are, are working or whether it be students who may be in a school that would be temporary closed or college or university, that it will uh, increase demands upon the uh, internet bandwidth. With, it, with this increase of worse, we need to be able to make sure that the increase in bandwidth use, usage is met. As a result, in typical Texas fashion, the private sector is stepping up. I, I applaud what AT&T just announced, that they are waiving internet data usages for any customer who does not have unlimited home internet access. Now, the state of Texas will continue to take preventative measures and work with our federal and local partners to contain this virus and to keep Texans safe. If you'll remember on February the 7th, Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio received 90 repatriations of American citizens from Hubei province in China. Among those 90, one of the people tested positive but has since been cleared. Importantly, all 90 of those people have now returned home. This is not a death sentence we're dealing with here. This is a typical outcome that we expect to see. Working together, I know that we can do it. Now, the, the leader of this effort in the state is the commissioner for DSHS, uh, Dr. Hellerstedt, who I will now call upon to make some remarks. Thank you, Governor Abbott. Uh, I'd really like to underscore the fact that Texas is prepared for this. Texas prepares for many disasters uh, all the time, and this is no exception. And we know that we have the capacity to be successful in meeting the challenge of, of COVID-19. I want to talk a little bit about some good news, if you will. Uh, one of the things that uh, CDC has done is has changed some of the recommendations that will, uh, will allow us to conserve uh, some of the inventory that we have of certain uh, types of supplies that are used in, in healthcare, and also to help expand the uh, capacity to do testing. I know that testing is, is, a, is a great uh, topic of interest, and as the governor said, uh, we have essentially two mechanisms for people to get tested. One is through the public health system, and the one that is rapidly expanding now is, 
is the private lab system. I, I feel that I can really give you the most details on the public health uh, system side of it. Here, uh, again, as, as, as the governor said, we have several public health labs in the state that are online and able to do testing. Currently, we believe the capacity to do that testing is somewhere around 270 individuals per day. And one of the things that has helped to uh, improve that uh, capacity is the, is the changes, again, that the CDC has made in terms of the types of specimens that we get from the patient and, and have them uh, tested. So, so that's really good news. Still, in Texas, through the public health system, we want individuals to contact their doctor. We want their doctor to contact the public health system and determine whether or not uh, uh, testing is suitable. Uh, at this point in time, uh, uh, the criteria that we'd use for testing would be that an individual, um, including healthcare workers, has symptoms. So we don't recommend and we aren't able to test people who do not have symptoms. And has, uh, but in addition to that, has had close contact with a confirmed case has traveled to a location with ongoing COVID-19, uh, has risk factors for poor outcome as a, uh, if they were infected with COVID-19, or they're hospitalized with fever and symptoms suspicious of COVID-19, uh, even if they do not have those known risk factors. So that use of our public health uh, uh, resources is what we need in order to uh, maintain our, our surveillance at a public health uh, level. But I know later we'll be answering questions. Thank you. And now, Chief Nimkit. Thank you, Governor. I'd like to remind everyone Texas is no stranger to preparing for, responding to, and recovering from disaster. For this event, while it may be a new virus, novel if you will, it's the same people, policies, and procedures that we have used for decades to serve and protect Texans. Over the last several days, we've been working with our local emergency management directors, the mayors and county judges in Chapter 418 of the Government Code, to make sure they understand the capability of the full resources that are available to them. We've asked them to inventory their personal protective equipment and to continue to report that back to us so we can make sure that all needs are met. We've asked them to dust off their continuity of operations plans to make sure that we have the right resources available and that we're giving the key service to Texans that are needed. We've also asked them to send us the regulations that might need to be waived, as Governor Abbott mentioned. We will collect those and make sure they're reported back. Communication is our key during this event. And then finally, I'd like to again thank the City of San Antonio for getting that testing facility up so quick. Absolutely. We'll take a few questions. Governor, how do you make sure that the health care situations, the emergency rooms, don't care That's one thing that we constantly work on. And, and again, let's go back in time. We began working and planning for this uh, back in January. Uh, and this is just a constant step up operation process uh, where Dr. Heller said, and other public health leaders uh, in the state of Texas are, are working in conjunction with local health authorities uh, to make sure that we will uh, continue to have that capacity. Now, how, setting up alternate facilities in case emergency do you get over trailers or do you go for COVID and emergency uh, You're exactly right. We are prepared for all of those contingencies. I, I will mention one thing uh, that is along the lines of kind of what you're talking about, and that is uh, one thing that we are establishing today and, and next week are these drive-through testing facilities but but in addition in addition to that you may see other type of uh, stand-up testing facilities a goal with the testing facilities uh, is to uh, not have people who may have COVID-19 uh, going into a health health care facility being tested there but instead being tested outside of those facilities so the, the ones you can expect uh, today in San Antonio, but perhaps as early as next week in uh, San Antonio, um, in, in Houston, in Dallas, and sometime soon in Austin, will be the drive-through, and then after that, additional stand-up facilities. Thank you very much. So the question is about flattening the curve, so to speak. What does that mean? 
it means that as a disease, particularly a novel viral disease, as we see, and we see in other parts of the world, has the capacity to spread very rapidly through a population. It's called novel because no population has pre-existing immunity to it, and, and, and pretty much everyone is susceptible. So the basic strategy is to make sure that it, we slow down the progression of that infection as much as we possibly can in absolutely every community in Texas. And so that's why the things that we're talking about are so important. I would like to also add that the things that have been done in terms of closing, uh, and uh, I think uh, it's, we should put that in perspective. Many of the things that have closed are things that are, if you will, optional. They're, they're leisure activities. We can afford to do without them in, when we're facing a, a serious situation such as we are now. And I think that there's great wisdom behind that. We do really want uh, that decision to be made at a local level, but as far as the, the concept, uh, there's, there's some merit to that. The other point I'd like to make is that we, we really, people need to understand that in order to protect themselves from COVID-19, they have to make sure that their neighbors and their friends and their coworkers can protect themselves against COVID-19 as well. We are really all in this together. If, if folks do what we're asking them to do, absolutely, we will flatten that curve. Uh, not specifically. It, it gives us flexibility uh, to address uh, any issue that may come up. Well, well, we'll have to take a look at it. Here, here's the deal, and, and that is, uh, for example, locally, uh, pretty much the only type of governmental entity that would be effective, uh, affected would be a hospital district, and, and they weren't subject to having their rollback rate changed. Uh, and so uh, for the other jurisdictions, uh, their resources uh, are, are not foreseeably going to be taxed right now for these reasons. Uh, we have already received uh, millions of dollars from the federal government already in our hands uh, that we will be parceling out to various local communities to respond to this. In addition to that, um, as we speak, Congress continues to work on additional programs that could pro provide additional funding. Uh, and so right now, uh, there are no unmet financial needs uh, at the local level. We'll see what happens. Say it again. Tra traveling during spring break. Listen, we. Um, it depends on where you're traveling to. Uh, of, of course, uh, with what the president has announced and, and what uh, seems to be obvious, and that is, it, it would not. Uh, it, it would be potentially uh, not a good idea to travel internationally. Uh, within the United States, uh, you just need to be smart. Uh, about you, what your travel is. Everyone needs to take uh, their own personal responsibility for their health as it concerns the travel. Do they need to travel? What type of environment are they traveling into? Are they traveling into a COVID hotspot? Are they traveling to an area where there is no indication of COVID whatsoever? And so there's, there's a lot of different issues that each person needs uh, to make a decision about. The last question, Bob Garrett. Bob, Bob Garrett, last question. Right. So uh, what we do is uh, we look at this uh, along a, a spectrum, if you would, about where we are and where we may go. Obviously, with uh, the number of people who have tested positive in Texas right now, there's no reason for anything like that. Uh, we will obviously adjust what a response is based upon the number of people who test positive. Thanks, guys. we got to go. Appreciate it. Number of tests in Texas? It's a lot right now, a lot and growing exponentially. Got all questions, shoot me a note. We'll get them answered. Thank you all, and thank all of you all. Also. Sure.